Well, today we are actually renovating the roof. That's right, it's roof day. For everybody who's been asking about a video on how to do your roofing, it's today. Now, I'm not a roofing expert. I don't like roofing. It's a lot of really hard work, and to be honest with you, I'm getting to that age where if I fell off a roof now, it would probably be catastrophic. So, I did the smart thing. Sometimes DIY is knowing when to make a phone call. So today I've got a crew out here. We're gonna go through the entire roofing process, the materials that we need, because we're out in the country. It is super windy, and in the winter time here, the shingles take a beating. So, we are going with a brand new architectural shingle. Okay, we've upped the game from the old three tab. We've got underlayments and water membranes. There's a whole lot of technology going on the roof nowadays. We found a great price. We're gonna go through all of the information so that you know what to expect when you're getting your quote and how to get it done right. So in the video today, we're not just gonna talk about the steps to doing a roof, but also how to engage in your contract, okay? Key elements here. Whatever's written down is what you can expect them to do. Outside of that, you can't expect anything. It's not a level playing field in the roofing business. Now, I've got a contract with these guys to put a system together, which is the architectural shingle system from GAF. And so there's all these components that work together. Make sure in your contract you got all your details. Step one on the workday is they actually set up the site, they put out tarps to protect your ground. What they're trying to do here is when they're doing the removal, they want to capture all of the debris on that surface so that the ground isn't covered in roofing nails when they're done. At the end of the day, it's their job to make sure that the site is safe. So they also put up the plywood to protect your hedges and your shrubs. A lot of care is taken from a good roofing company, all right? And so you want to make sure you put that in your contract, what their plans for site protection and management of your grass is. It's a big key. So the first thing these guys got to do is put life and limb on the line to get to the peak of the roof. Now that's a pretty steep roof. It's a 45 degrees. It's a 12-12 pitch. So when they run up there, <laughs> they got to be real careful not to slide off. Now they're sitting up there, they're putting their bracket, their anchor in the top of the roof. They can tie off their ropes and use their harnesses for the rest of the day. It's just about getting through the first five minutes. After that, it's pretty safe. So let's just put something in perspective here. This is a crew of four guys who do this for a living, who've got the right equipment. Almost an hour later, they're still working on removing the first side. Part of this is because of the slope. They got to wire the gear. Now, if you're gonna try this at home as a DIYer, first thing I'd do is buy your harness, make sure you got all that gear. There's no way you'd be able to walk up and down on that roof. If this was a normal 412 pitch, right? They'd have the whole roof empty by now, in one hour. But because of the situation they're working with, they're gonna be here for almost three days. It's one thing to consider if you're looking at buying a property that you're gonna renovate, check out the roof line. I got four quotes on this house that was 12 to 20,000 for the same product to be installed in this roof. I'm telling you right now, if this was a regular 412 pitch, I could have had it done for six or seven, but that's the cost of doing business. Step two is the ice and water shield. And that is about a four foot wide panel that goes all the way across the bottom. Should also cover all of your valleys, okay? Anywhere where your roof is changing pitch or direction or coming to an end, you need to have your ice and water shield on there and that protects you against ice in the winter time, basically is what it's for. When you get a freeze thaw cycle, the ice will actually crawl up underneath the shingles and then penetrate your roof. That keeps you safe. So in recent years, we've been changing technology on a roof to move more from a water diversion system to more components of a waterproofing system. Uh, still today, you can opt out. If you want, you can get ice and water shield on the entire roof. There are other synthetic membranes you can add, but the reality is this. The roof is really designed to take the water and divert it off the building. That's it. Now in different climates, we have different needs. So up here in the north, especially on the side facing the sun, we're going to have different times of the year where it'll be freezing at night and then it'll warm up during the day and we'll end up with an ice dam at the bottom of the roof. This happens a lot, especially in an old house like this because we don't have any fresh air in the soffit. Ice damming is really, really common. And that means that there's two or three feet of ice and then it melts and then it freezes and goes, crawls underneath your shingles. And if you don't have something under the shingles to take that water and keep it from penetrating your roof, it's like not having a roof at all. Step three is the starter strip. It's just a really thick, durable, wind-resistant layer all around your edging to help make sure that you don't get lift in the high winds. Step four is the next layer, which is the finished layer. It's the shingles. Now there's lots of details and a few other things we're gonna talk about as part of the whole system, but the shingle is basically the last layer and he's putting those on now. It's just using an automatic pneumatic nailer. It's a pretty basic, simple job. Their job really is to find a line and stick to it. A Little bit of experience goes a long way here. I know it looks a little sketchy, but the reality is that's the job. 
All right, so step five of any roof is the synthetic membrane. And the reason for that is, again, we're moving from just diversion into waterproofing. Okay, so by adding the synthetic membrane, they're adding another layer of protection in case the original diversion system fails, wind-driven rain and that sort of thing. And on top of that, if you're a good professional roofer, you always make sure at least that membrane is on at the end of the day because that alone acts as a water diversion system and it'll protect the house in case you get a freak storm. Now today the weather report says no chance of rain, but it's also very humid. So that means it could rain. <laughs> One other thing you've got to remember, these guys know what they're doing. They've been trained to work the system. Okay, so gaff warranty comes as a system is done right. So they know how many nails per square foot, per linear foot, or the kind of fastener they're supposed to be using. Every detail is part of the work order and is itemized on the contract so that you can make sure that you're checking off that every one of those products is being used in the correct order when they're working on your roof. That gives you peace of mind. Some roofing companies are gonna come along and they're gonna sell you from twelve dollars to $20,000 for the same roof because they're gonna call what they're calling bells and whistles. They're gonna throw in a little extras. It's not really necessary. And paying for peace of mind when you're buying a roof $8,000 because you don't know the system? Or watch a video like this and pay 12. I'll let you be the judge. So I'm over here with Arzan today. Now he's one of the owners over at Roofmaster and we're gonna have a quick chat about the roof and where it went and where it came to. Yeah. Because I'll be honest with you, when I went to go and price out my roof, I was a little shocked. Yeah. It's been a while since I bought a roof. Prices have gone up. They have, yeah. but it's not about price per square foot is about price per square foot by how long it's going to last. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. So this is what I'm learning and it made me feel better. So yeah. I, I remember the days being on a job site, there'd be a roofer next door and they would knock on the door and say, hey, we're here. It's a simple two sides, you know, 412. Yeah. We can knock it off in an afternoon, 2,000 cash. Yeah. Those days are gone. Those days are long gone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. So talk to me because when I was looking at my pitch, I got a 1212, mm -hmm. right? I was looking at the idea of maybe going with metal. Yeah. I got the quotes for that. I started getting quotes for uh, the architectural shingle that's been installed now. That's right. And it came down to basic math for me. It was almost the same price per square foot per year. Yeah. Right? Essentially, yeah, that's what it comes down to. Is that fair to. to say that? Yeah. And I mean, for most, like, most people may not understand what a 12-12 is, and that's basically a steep roof, something that's not walkable. Uh, it has a really good pitch to it. so you're not gonna have the issues you'd have with lower pitch roofs. Like, it, I, like in the winter time, and, yeah. You know, those winter related issues. Sure, sure. Um, you know, but it has its own challenges, right? Because a steep roof is a lot more uh, labor intensive <laughs> yeah, to, to remove tell. and reinstall. Right. Our shingles, you know, of the past would last, they, they were rated for 25 years and um, they would last anywhere from, you know, 10 to 15 years on average. So let's talk about that. Yeah. Right? It's like, um, uh, wow. That is probably one of the only industries where people have a product mm -hmm. that you buy with a, a year attached to it, your life expectancy, yeah. where you'll never meet it. Never. Because yeah. life expectancy in a roof shingle is dependent on so much other technology in the home yeah. and where you live, what kind of weather That's conditions right. you're getting. Yeah. And it's one shingle being sold on all of North America with yeah. the same expectation. Exactly. So what you do is you take that, that base of, we'll call it a 25 year, and then we apply it to where you live and then you can have a realistic expectation. Yeah. Right? Like climate, climate's a big factor and then also yep. the way that the, 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 the building construction, right? So right. if you have a conventional attic with soffits and good exhaust vents, you have a lot better airflow in there and your shingles will last a little bit longer. With old houses like this, we just, we just don't see that conventional construction. Everything's closed off, like you said here. You don't yeah. have any functional soffits. Right, right. Uh, you know, so the roof's gonna get very hot. It's gonna deteriorate a lot faster than if it was conventional construction. Okay, so let's yeah. talk about that because uh, when I was making my choice, I was looking at a, a metal roof and they call it a 50 year roof. Yeah. Your shingle, a certain teeth is a 25 year roof? Yeah, this is a BP shingle. Right. And it's a, uh, but, but they're all very similar. So like most of the manufacturers have what they call a lifetime shingle. Okay. That's a 50 year, uh, roughly a, like a 50 year, you know, and the warranties vary slightly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, and the way they prorate. So, so all of those shingle products are prorated. That's something that's important to understand because it's not like a 50 year, uh, so, some steel roofing products have a 50 year non prorated warranty. Okay. Um, 
And if there's any issues with that product, the manufacturer will get, you know, cover the full cost of replacing the product. Okay. If it's prorated, you know, if it's a 50 year, uh, let's say a 50 year warranty and it's prorated, well, after 25 years, they're only going to give you half the half original the value, half the original value. Right. Right. So after 25 years, you can imagine. Yes. You know, no, the, the cost of the product went up and so, so you're getting a few bucks. Today I buy a roof metal. It's 20 yeah. to 25,000 for this house. Yeah. Let's say 25 years from now, there's an issue. I still own the same house. Yeah. That's the other key. That's the key. You have to own you the house. You have to own still, the house yeah. still. In most cases. Yeah, some of them are transferable, but. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but if you have an issue at 25 years, they're going to give you half of the 20 to 25 that you spent. But yeah. now the same roof is going to cost you 50. Yeah, the same product has gone up, say, right? maybe, maybe twice as much for the product. So you're well, really you only going to get a fraction. Okay. Right? And that's fine. That's better yeah. than nothing. Yeah. But so then when I was making my decision, I was like, okay, what do I really need out here? I'm going to have either I'm all in on a metal roof and I'm selling the house anyway. Because mm -hmm. I'm going to buy another one and do a bunch of videos there. And so what I'm looking at then is I want to be able to sell this house and give a product to the next homeowner that if they were to buy this house, that roof is going to last them the life of their mortgage. Yeah, exactly. And that, I think, is a very responsible way to do business. Yeah, and that's how a lot of people see it, right? They, right? No one really wants to spend money on a roof. If you had 15 grand to spend, you'd rather spend it doing your kitchen or, or remodeling, right. you know, bathrooms, whatever. Uh, so roofing is one of those things that we, we have to get done. Yep. And, uh, you know, you want to just, you spend the money and then not have to think about it. When we were researching return on investment, outside projects get you the best return on investment. Roof doesn't do that great. Yeah. But at the same time, if you don't have a great roof, you'll never sell your house. Yeah, that's right. It's kind of a weird oxy paradox, weird yeah. thing going on there. No one wants to buy a house and have to do the roof. Right? No, because so. they, they don't want to have to finance that operation after the fact. Yeah, exactly. Right? So here we go. So you need to have a good roof. Yeah. We used to buy a three tab shingle. Yeah. We used to get five or seven years on it. That's what we're ripping off now. Yeah. It's a seven year old roof. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. That roof is seven years old. Yeah. Um, so let's quick talk about the product. Show me what you're putting on our house for the people at home. Okay, because so. Our, our, we, we're, they're seeing the system, right? They yeah. know there's layers. Of course. But there's a lot more water diversion system going on in the entire house now. Yeah. So it's more umbrella based and not just diversion. Yeah. So it's, it's basically, um, you, have, you have two separate systems here. So we rip off the old shingles, of course. Uh, we, we never want to go on top of an old shingle roof. That just multiplies reasons. the heat factor, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, and also the um, you you have no chance to inspect the deck underneath. That's true. So you could be installing over rotten wood or yeah, you know potentially something that was an issue. Yeah. You might have had a valley or a wall that was leaking. Yeah. And you really have no way to inspect that. You have yeah, no yeah. way to know where it was leaking before, what the condition of the uh, the substrate is. Yeah. You know, if it's planks with large gaps. Or you know if it's nice plywood like you have here on this house. It's an interesting point because now that we're using pneumatic nailers for everything. Yeah. The guy that's installing. You can't tell. You can't tell the difference between no. good wood and bad wood. Yeah. It's 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 a lot. You can, but Maybe, it's it's but much more difficult yeah, yeah, to tell, yeah. right? And so it's it's a it's imperative to strip off the old roof, inspect the deck, right. make any repairs that are necessary at sure. that point. Then you install your new roof, and it, yeah. it's basically two parts, right? You have your your underlay, which consists of the ice and water shield, right? Yep. Uh, now that can be three feet from the eave up or six feet. It's in intervals of, of three feet. Uh, in your case, we're doing three feet yep. eight, uh, at the eaves and then three feet up the valleys. And yep. the reason for the the valleys is because that's they're just very prone to ice back up, yep. uh, especially with the Ottawa climate. And uh, for the <laughs> eaves, it's it's also part of the building code to go with a heavier uh, a heavier uh, grade waterproof membrane. Yes. And so that's why we put three feet at the eaves. Now, if you have a, a lower pitch roof, uh, it's, it's not uncommon to see us put six or even nine feet of ice and water shield from the eave up. Okay. Um, and that's just to give us a little bit better protection against water backup, you know, during the winter. Right, when, so when you, you have a thaw, free cycle. Exactly. Steep roof, water yeah. will still run off. Yeah, you got it. On a flat roof, it'll sit there. Yeah. So you're done. Yeah. Now, you mentioned the building code. What is minimum code for a roof? So the minimum is, yes, you have to have a waterproof membrane. Okay. Like 36 inches up from your eave. So that could be, uh, it, it, yeah, it, I'm not sure on the technical specifications, but it, it just, you can't just have your, your, your base underlay. 
okay. uh, from the EVE up. It's got to be something a little more substantial. Right. Um, and so for in the Ottawa area, we always go with three feet of ice and water shield. Yep. Um, you know, Toronto and other areas of the of the country have different climates, maybe less necessary. Sure. Uh, but for us, we have a lot of freeze thaw cycles. Are you familiar with anything in uh, going down in the states? How that how it changes? Or well, in the northern states, it's it's a lot like up here. Not like here. Um, you know, similar weather patterns and yep. stuff. I, I guess where you're closer to water, like larger bodies of water, there's more moderate temperatures. Sure. And so in those climates, um, I think you can get away with having less waterproofing right. underneath the shingles. Okay. Right. And so what, what you have to remember is the shingles themselves are not waterproof. Uh, you know, and, and even the underlays, not really waterproof. Everything's going to work, uh, you know, when water runs down the slope. Right, right? and we talk about that on this channel. It's a, it's a diversion system. That's right. If you install the roof upside down, it's gonna your house floods. Yeah, it's gonna leak. Right? It's not waterproof. Exactly. Unless you go with a flat roofing system that's that's actually torched and welded and sealed. It, it could actually hold water. Okay, so right. minimum code is ice and water shield, yeah. valleys, ridges, all those things where we're gonna get ice. Yeah. Do you have to have a synthetic underlay on a house? It doesn't have to be synthetic. Uh, you know, in the past we used like a tar paper. Um, but the thing is with roofs lasting longer now, that tar paper disintegrates and it deteriorates over time, right? Makes sense, so match the technology with the technology. Exactly, so if we're going with a longer lasting shingle, yep. we want to have a longer lasting underlay. That's basically what this is. It's, it's, like, a, it's like a very high grade Tyvek, right? It's, so it's, it's uh, breathable one way. Right. Air can still, air and so, moisture can get out. Because we still have a lot of people confused about that. Yeah. Right? House wrap, the Tyvek. It's not a vapor proof system. Water vapor can still move. So relative humidity, right? This product here operates in the same technology. So your, your roof can still breathe, which is very important to help keep it dry. But this is cool. This has got like an anti-slip thing Yeah, on that's it. right. It's also specifically designed for us. For These crazy roofers, yeah. yeah. That, so that when it's installed, it's not very slippery. Nice. Right? Even if it got wet a little bit, it, it still has some grip to it. Yeah. And it's a lot more durable. You'll notice it's a lot thicker than a, a home wrap. Definitely. Because it's not just being installed on a vertical wall. We're actually walking on it. Um, there's gonna be traffic. All right, and so let's talk about the shingle then real quick. Yeah. This is an architectural shingle. That's incredibly dense. Yeah, you can tell it's a laminate shingle. Laminate just means that there's multiple layers uh, basically glued or, or laminated to one another here. Mm -hmm. And uh, what, what you're gonna get is a little bit more rigidity against wind lift. Yes. Also, these shingles are butted tight with the, the ones beside them, so there's no gaps, right? Like you'd have in a three-tab shingle. Yeah, yeah. Uh, those gaps allow wind and water and things to, to get in behind. Right. And help, you know, just, it just deteriorates. So in the, the, in the driving, driving rain. That's right. Right. Driving rain or wind, especially wind, right? Wind can get under the tab and lift it up. Uh, the other big factor here is we're going from an wow. organic shingle to yeah. a fiberglass base shingle. I was going to say, because the old so. shingles of the days, you could fold them over and then just yeah, tear them off. They would just snap like a cookie. And these things are a lot more resilient uh, because the base layer in here is just, a, it's like a fiberglass mat. Right. It's like a woven fiberglass uh, base. And That's then awesome. you have your, your standard, you know, tar and asphalt and your, 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 um, your granules. The other big difference is where the, uh, the, um, they put the glue on these shingles. Two, two rows of glue here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The important thing is that the, the glue is now on the edge, on the underside of the edge of the shingle, rather than, uh, you notice the three tabs. The three tabs here, in the middle. Right? Yeah. So what happens is when you have a tar line on the shingle every, here. Every shingle would be able to lift up and Yes. Win. And it's also inconsistent because if you're if you're shingling slightly lower, you're you're you know you could be an inch away from your tar line. Nice. In um, in so this case, you, you're always in a consistent area. You're always gluing the shingle at that and ideal location. And this is basically location. heat activated, eh? Yep. So once yeah. you stick it on, it exactly melts together. And it's always going to seal right in an ideal location. Brilliant. So now I'm going to have a 25 year roof. Well, this is a this is a 50 year product. I know. So my expectation you is you could easily expect 25, <laughs> 30 years out of it. I would think this is my thing because without the fresh air, I want to just manage my expectation. Yeah. And I don't exactly. want people watching the video going, oh, I'm buying a 50 year roof. Yeah. Because you then have to say, what's the condition of my house? What's the orientation? Do I have shade? Do I have winter? That's right. Am That's I right. is it, am I in an area where I get so much direct sunlight and heat yeah. that it's going to affect it? What's my ventilation? Yeah. All these different factors. Well, even a steel roof, well, there's, you know, a common misperception is that a steel roof lasts forever. Yeah. And, you know, in many cases, the products themselves uh, may be 
may retain integrity as far as a waterproof system, it's but they're going to lose the they're finish. They're going to look ugly. Yeah, they'll look ugly, right? The paint. We have we have a climate yeah. where you have snow and ice sliding down that that yes. painted steel finish, right? So it's right. going to slowly deteriorate. It's going to dull first. That makes good sense. And then slowly, you're going to be left with a a scratched up or a dulled roof, right? And so a lot so, of people will still change their lifetime steel roofs because they don't look good. I'm rethinking my decision now. It's even better than before. I thought it was just being cheap. Yeah, no, no, it's, <laughs> it's a good decision. Because now I've Go got this 50 year shingle, Yeah. put next to a 50 year yeah. metal roof, there's gonna be deterioration on both of those products. But you're paying more for the, the, the steel. Pretty much, Yeah. pretty much I'm getting if this roof shingle only lasts me 25 years and yeah. I replace it again, it's the same dollar per square foot per year. But yeah, my exactly. initial investment is so much lower. Exactly. So shingle is the best bang for the buck. Hmm. Um, no kidding. You know, if, if you go with a uh, laminate shingle like this, lifetime warranty, manufacturers offer various upgraded warranties that right, you can right. buy uh, if you want to upgrade your warranty to have yeah. it like non-prorated. Okay. Uh, so a lot of the manufacturers are doing programs like that. Essentially, it really doesn't change. You'd have to meet conditions for that though, right? I You'd mean, have to I would meet never some match. conditions, yeah. Yeah, I would never match that with my low soffit air. But is it really going to do anything for you? Probably not. Are you going to be in the house 30 years? Yeah. Most people sell their house a lot sooner than that, right? So in our, in our, in more, our country, yeah. Yeah, to pay more for a warranty that you, you probably won't use, uh, you know, just doesn't make the most sense to me. Well, there you go. So but, if you're building a forever home, maybe, yeah. Yeah. right? If you're yeah. building any other house and you put on a new roof, in years gone by, you could just put a three tab shingle over an existing roof and sell a house and screw yeah. the next guy. That, yeah, a lot of, of course, that is going on. Of course. And but don't now, forget the other downside with steel, a yeah. lot of people completely overlook this, is that if the house is not designed for it, you're going to have a whole, whole other issue, right, with ice and snow sliding off the roof. This is the thing. Compacting itself when it yep. lands, yep. and you're going to end up with like this this moat around your house or this this berm, right? You know, uh, and then water's going to fill up, you know, behind it. You could have foundation issues, etc. Yep. So, yep. you know, a steel roof isn't always the the best be all end all solution. Yes, that's good advice because right? when you're when you're dealing with your house, you can't just look at every every system of the home individually. No, exactly. You have to look at the overall picture. Yeah. Exactly. Like most people always forget the grading on their house. Yeah. That's the most common yeah. mistake. Yeah. And then they end up with a foundation problem, not a grading yeah. problem. Or you could have a driveway <laughs> right beside the, the roof edge and yes. uh, you, you know, you put a steel roof on, you'd never be able to park your car in that area right. for fear that you'll have an avalanche, you know, come down and destroy your car. Well, this is awesome. So after 25 years, if the roof is still in good shape, it's just a free roof. <laughs> Essentially, <laughs> anything after that is a pro bono. Right? It's just money in the bank. Yeah. Awesome. Exactly. Well, thanks for taking time. Appreciate yeah. that, Arzan. Yeah, absolutely. All right. All right, there you go, guys. So, you know what? When it comes down to it, best bang for your buck, the world has changed, okay? Get yourself a good quality roof. Don't be afraid to go with a three-tab shingle. It's not a lesser roof. It's just a different option. Now, that was the easiest project I've ever done in my entire life because all I did was make a phone call. Listen, sometimes DIY is knowing your limitations. I can't stand getting on a steep ladder, especially in the blaring hot sun. It's not my cup of tea anymore. So I made the call. I hired a roofing company. Now the truth is, is if you're gonna be updating the outside of your house, don't stop at just the roof. Change the siding, change your windows, um, do your doors over again, your soffit, your fascia, new eaves trough. Just do it all as one great big package, all right? Uh, listen, if you learned anything today and that was helpful, then hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel because we've got a lot of other improvements on this project coming your way and you don't wanna miss them out. Remember, we're gonna teach you all of the best ways to get return on your investment when you're renovating your property. That's one of the things we're gonna do on this channel. So hit this playlist right here. You can learn how to do your siding and your windows and install your doors, fix up your whole darn house, all right? We'll see you soon.